Let's uh, give it up for Dr. Ken Kay. He's now currently in charge of a, a consortium called Ed Leader 21 that we belong to, many districts belong to. Dr. Ken Kay. Okay. So, um, so let me let me start by saying I I I, I love Young Zhao's work. I reread his last book. The new book's coming out in June, August. And I reread his last book this week, which is an incredible book if you've not read it. Read it if you've read it, read it again. If you've not read it, read it. And um, I, was, I was really struck by, and I can confirm, um, the experience that he describes, because I, I've not been to China much, but my second trip to China was for education delegation, and I was on a panel on 21st century skills in China. And um, the room was just flooded with folks. I mean, it was a standing, a small room, but it was standing room only. And as soon as the t statement started, the Chinese said, we only have one question for you. We, we all want to know one thing. How do you teach creativity in the United States? That was the first thing they wanted. You're Mr. 21st Century Skills. How do you teach creativity in the United States? And I said, you know, you're going to be so disappointed with my answer. We really don't. We really don't. It's in the drinking water. <laughs> it's in the way we raise our kids. It's not what's going on in K through 12 classrooms that creates Lady Gaga. I will t say in a moment why I think we can be more intentional about it, but it's the fact that we say to our kids, what's your passion? Go find your passion. We say that to all our kids. That's the way we raise our kids, right? Or we say to them, you know, what can you be good at? Let's find the thing that you're good at which is very different than the cultures that we're talking about. So I think that we need to spend more time really understanding how we have created a spirit of creativity and entrepreneurship in the United States, but it primarily is not a K through 12 driven issue, I don't think, or hasn't been. So in my travels, I've been looking and open to trying to figure out what is it that people are doing that really moves that ball forward. And um, so I want to show you, it is a gorgeous butterfly. What grade of student drew that? First grade. On a 10 point scale for a first grader, give me the, give me the, um, a 10. Somebody said 11. I agree, by the way. Thank you. Um, student prodigy, maybe? Maybe a Tory of art? Maybe? Yes? Not so much. OK. Next slide. Here's the first draft. Draft one is where this student started. Draft one is where the students started. Give me a grade on 10. On the draft one, give me a grade for a first grade of three. Okay, good. Okay, now, now, watch what happened in the pedagogy. This is brilliant pedagogy. Watch what happened. There is not, there's a student, in, there's a teacher in the room, but the teacher is managing a process where all the feedback that Austin's getting is from his fellow students, only fellow students. So what did the fellow students say when they looked at draft one compared to the assignment photo? What'd they tell them? It's too round. And actually what they said was, look at the triangles in the photograph and see if you can make it look more like that. Look at draft two, right? He goes back to his desk, he does draft two. Now they say to him, well look, if you look at the butterfly, there's a bottom part of the butterfly. It's not all one shape. So he goes back, and draft three, he gets the bottom right. What do they tell him when they look at draft three? He left the triangles out. They round it up again, right? Then they say to him, go back and put the triangles back on and keep it in two parts, and look at draft four. 
And then they said, you're ready to put in some design. So we did draft five. And there's the final draft six. All student assisted coaching. All student assisted coaching. What's it tell you? What's this, what's Austin Butter? First of all, go on, the, on YouTube and, and look for Austin's Butterfly. There are four or five videos that you'll find. You'll see Ron Berger. In fact, Tom, next year or the year after, when this theme is about creativity for a whole day, about how to teach creativity, bring Ron Berger, who's the sort of the guru of student work. He'll bring a suitcase of 100 examples of student work but talk about how do we improve the pedagogy around this work, okay? When, when Young and I talk about what does a 21st century classroom need to look like, we need to start to own practices like this where intentional and purposeful about moving creativity forward. And in this case, creativity is not something that can't, doesn't come with practice and doesn't, by the way, come with collaboration. This was a totally collaborative exercise where the Austin couldn't have done his work without his peers. He wouldn't have done this by himself. And think how the peers feel that they were part of a process and watched Austin improve his work as part of their collaborative input. So we got a huge disconnect. But here's really the problem, and this is really the only reason I came. And this is what I do want to be disruptive about. Most school districts in this country, there are 14,000 of them, are sitting around and when I talk to them about this, they go, can't do anything, no, no child left behind. Can't do anything, common core. And I might add that state policy and federal policy have disempowered superintendents and local leaders from owning what needs to happen in districts around this country. Thank you. And so one of the reasons I was so glad that Tom and the Napa team had put in here that leadership needs to be one of the themes, I'll be happy in our breakout sessions, Larry and others and I will talk to you about some very, very specific practices in classrooms. I'll show you a video that what does a 21st century district look like, which would have taken eight of my 20 minutes here, so I didn't, didn't really want to share with that. But at the end of the day, there needs to be a new generation of courageous superintendents and leadership teams that on their own are prepared to do the things that need to be done to move districts into the 21st century. My list is a little bit different than Young's list. I focus on the four C's. Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So in, in my journey, here's what happened to me. I was, ran the National Partnership for 21st Century Skills for eight, uh, eight years, but about six years in. I started to get inundated by requests from districts and schools saying, we love the idea of critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. We don't know how to implement. We don't know what to do. And so I went around the country. I interviewed 30 superintendents. And I said, if we create a new group to support local implementation around 21st century education, what should it look like? And we came up with this idea of a professional learning community for leaders. And we formed Ed Leader 21. Um, we now have 87 districts. Napa is one of them. And we have at least one other superintendent from which district? Ross from Ross Valley in Marin County. I don't know if we have any other Ed Leader 21 districts in the room right now. Yep. Pardon? Imperial, Imperial County, Office of Education. We have about 15 districts in California that have joined our, our professional learning community to create an environment cross state lines in which superintendents and their leadership teams can talk to each other about how to implement 21st century education, share best practices. And people have said to me, you know, oh, well, 
you're, the, the districts you worked with when you were doing policy are just going to join the group, and it's not worked that way at all. What's fascinating to me is the three states that have had the most members are California, New York, and Virginia have joined dozens of districts from those three states. Why? Because they said nobody was at home in Albany, nobody was at home in Richmond, nobody was at home in Sacramento that really understood and was implementing policies to move 21st century education forward. And so we've created a national community of leaders to try to move that vision forward, cross state lines, because quite frankly, state and federal policy aren't going to get us there in the current environment. They just aren't. In addition to my trip to China, I wanted to talk to you about my trip to Napa. Because there's real reason I'm here, and the real story I want to tell you is why this conference makes sense to me and why I hope it grows from today. Because Napa has the credentials to actually create a 21st century conference that grows from here, and here's why. I'm, I'm one year into uh, my work. I'm going around the country giving speeches on 21st century skills. I get a call from somebody. It was called the New Tech Foundation, not the New Tech Network, and says, you got to come here and see we're actually assessing 21st century skills in Napa. And I said, well, why? I shouldn't have said that. I said, why? Why are you doing that? And they said, well, here's what happened. We went to the business community before we built the new high school. I, is it the same high school that Tori's at, or is it? Yeah, oh, you're, yeah. it's same high school. The original one? Yeah. OK, great. So this was, like, this was like eight years ago, though. And they said, um, I said, why did you build the high school? He said, well, we, went, we wanted to build the new high school. And the business community said, we won't support the building of the new high school. And they said, why not? And they said, here's why. Because we aren't getting graduates from your current high school that have an adequate work ethic and critically think adequately. And we're not going to support a second high school if it doesn't create kids that can be successful in 21st century jobs. So they went back and they said, well, wait a second. If we build a high school that focuses on work ethic and focuses on critical thinking, will you support the building of the second high school? And they said, yes, we will. That's how the new tech happened. That's the, my version of new tech. All the new tech people have their own version. I like mine better. So, but, but, but here's this, why this story is powerful. So I get to new tech. The, and this is the first year, I think, at the end of the first year. And this student walks up to me. He says, Mr. K, I'm your tour guide. And he shows me around new tech. And by the way, has everybody in this room been in a, in a new tech classroom? How, and how, how many have you been? OK, you got to solve that problem. You got to go see it. And by the way, people know this. Patrick knows this. I go all around the country telling people they got to see new, new, new tech classrooms. Not, by the way, it was really funny is when I'm in the East Coast, I said, look, here's the problem. You've got two choices. You've got Napa and you've got Indiana. You'll never guess which they want, they want to come see. <laughs> so all the poor slobs in Ohio got to go see the one in Indiana. They, they were upset about that. So, he, so, here's what, so here's what happened. He shows me around the double classrooms. He shows me around. It doesn't look like a normal classroom. He finally says, I said to him, I came here to see because I was told you guys assess these. You assess the four C's. And um, here, here, here's the new version of the report card. This is not the one I saw back then. This is a phenomenal report card. This is the new one. But here's, here's, what, I, here's what I basically saw back then. It was a much cruder version of this. There was a grade. His grade actually was, overall, was a B, right, and, or an A. And then I looked at the same thing. Can you read content literacy, written competency, oral communications, collaboration, work ethic, which is what they wanted to get at, and critical thinking? And they're all weighted. But here's the deal. His communication skill grade was 55%. I said to him, how do you feel when you got a 55%? He says to me, in the old high school, if I got a 55, somebody, in anything, somebody would say, just work harder. Here, because this was online, by the time I got home at 5 o'clock, my mother said to me, my mother had already been online, my mother had already seen my grades, she had already called my teacher. 
And she said, you can't cut me off in the middle of the Napa story. And um, <laughs> try. <laughs> this is about New Tech and Napa, ma'am. Um, and, and, and says, and, says um, and she says, what are we going to do to help our kid? Uh, to, what are you going to do to help my kid on his oral communications grade? And she said, we're recommending two interventions. The first intervention is the drama coach is taking the five kids that flunk communications and meeting with them once a week on presentation skills. What was the second intervention? He was assigned to be the high school guide, and that's how I got him. <laughs> that was brilliant. So look, I, I'm led from that story to two conclusions. One, Napa and this region and new tech have a role to play in helping us grow the conversation about 21st century skills in the country. And I want to thank Patrick, and I want to thank Tom Davis for beginning this conversation. It's got to grow. We've got to have two or three times as many people in the room next year. And we've got to start focusing on the four C's, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking, as an organizing principle of this conference, I believe. But secondly, I want all of you to talk to Tom Torklinson between now and dinner tonight and talk about what do we do in California to create a climate that allows the new techs to survive and thrive, that allows Austin's butterfly to thrive and survive, and that allows more districts to not use the excuse that state and federal policy are standing in the way because they can't. Because we know that the districts of this country and the kids of this country deserve better, which is we've got to pursue the kinds of dynamic visions that new tech and that other districts have provided that are in our group, Ed Leader 21. And hopefully this conference will be one of the places in California where those districts come together and insist that they be given the momentum, the nurturing, and the support to do the kinds of things happening here in Napa. Thanks very much.